Hi everyone, this is Mr. Schaefer. From my recording studio to your device, I have for you today the exciting conclusion of our AP Calculus mock exam solution guide walkthrough. This is AB question two, so part two of Brian Passwater's um, homemade mock exam question. Again, a great question, about a 15 minute FRQ, so shorter than question one. And it has to do with something that uh, we all love, and that's pizza. So here's the situation. It's a numerical calculus problem because we have a table of data that's given to us in the problem. And notice that it's a rate that they're giving us as well. Capital C prime of T is given in hundreds of calls per hour to this pizza chain from the time intervals of 6 p.m. to 2 o'clock in the morning, where 6 p.m. is our initial time of t equals zero. So let's go through this FRQ together. I'm gonna to walk you through the solution guide and help you out with how you can earn full credit on this sample FRQ. First question says to use the data to approximate c double prime of seven. First thing to know is that when t equals seven, we're actually talking about, um, Seven, seven hours after time zero. So that would be at one o'clock in the morning between six and eight. Um, so right about here is where that seven would fall. I can use a symmetric difference quotient to find that approximation. And we should always show the symmetric difference quotient when we're trying to establish that from a data table. So for full credit, let's begin by saying C double prime of seven is equal to, or is approximately equal to, <clears throat> the difference quotient of C prime of eight minus C prime of six. So I bounded the seven between the eight and the six and then divide that by eight minus six. So I'll have a value of 0.2 minus one in the numerator, all divided by two. And that should become negative 0.4, negative 0.4. Um, then it says to use correct units and interpret the meaning. So what I would do here is, we'll look at units in just a moment, but that phrase, interpret the meaning, we're going to need to write a sentence answer here. Don't forget that what we're doing here with these FRQs is providing a formal presentation of our work. We want to show the AP readers that we have a clear understanding ex of exactly what derivative or integral calculation um, we're doing and what they mean. So here's an interpretation sentence that we might use for uh, C double prime of seven and what it means in context. So let's relate it back to the pizza chain discussion. Remember that this function C prime is the, uh, the rate at which the pizza chain receives calls in hundreds of calls per hour. So the derivative of that or the second derivative would be the rate at which the rate is increasing or decreasing. So maybe something like this would be a good sentence. The rate the pizza chain there's the context once again receives calls is and I'm going to look at the sign here of my of my approximation which is negative so it's decreasing. The rate that the pizza chain receives calls is decreasing by, and again, it's in hundreds of hours, hundreds of calls per hour. So if I multiply that 0.4 by 100, we'll get 40. So 40 calls per hour per hour. And then again, always remember to go back and interpret the, the time. Uh, that independent variable is given at time 7. So at T equals seven or at one o'clock in the morning. It's a second derivative analysis inter or a second derivative interpretation sentence. So it's not that the number of calls is decreasing. The rate that they receive calls is decreasing by 40 calls per hour per hour at one o'clock in the morning. Okay, moving forward here. Letter B, does the data in the table support the conclusion that there's a time at which the pizza chain receives 300 delivery calls per hour? So 300 delivery calls per hour, that's going to come back here and relate to this very same unit, essentially. C prime is given in calls per hour. Will that ever hit 300? So I'm not really looking for 
a, a second derivative. I'm not looking for a C double prime value here. It's just a, a C prime. And so that's going to be the theorem. That would be the intermediate value theorem. Let's take a look and see if that would happen. 300. Well, again, it's in hundreds of calls per hour. So is there a, is there a C prime value or values, I should say, that bound um, the number three? And sure enough, it looks like between 4.5 and 2.5, we'd have the three. You can even argue that between zero and eight at time zero, I've got a five. At time eight, I have a 0.2. And we bound the three within there as well. So it doesn't matter what interval you use as long as you're between 0 and 8. I'm going to use that 0 and 8. And the conclusion would be yes. Now remember, in order to use IVT, we first need to make sure that our function C prime is continuous. And because the problem says it's differentiable, then by definition, it's also going to be continuous. So I'm going to say this. Since C prime of t is differentiable, and therefore continuous. There's my continuity prerequisite to use IVT. The other prerequisite to use IVT is to state betweenness. I want to make sure that I have two function values that bound the 300. So I'm going to write down the word and because I want to show that betweenness step next. Um, C prime of 8, I'll use that, which is 0. 2, which is less than my value of 300, which is, well, I should say my value of 3, because it's all in hundreds of calls, which is less than C prime of 2, actually, no, I'm sorry, C prime of 0, it should be, if I use 0 and 8. And C prime of 0 is 5. So there's my between this statement. Um, and you could actually multiply all those by 100 to get the actual calls per hour. But we'll just say um, that between the statement given in hundreds of calls per hour. That'll take care of the, the values there. Then there. There is a time, oops, on that interval zero to eight, when the chain receives three hundred calls per hour. So again, a couple things to keep in mind with using IVT. Let's state the continuity prerequisite and then also the betweenness prerequisite before we state IVT. One thing I haven't done yet is to actually list the theorem. That's probably the most important thing to do is come back here and um, let's see here. I can say then by IVT, let me just insert that phrase right here by the intermediate value theorem. There we go. There is a time on that interval when the chain receives 300 calls per hour. It's not an MBT question here because we're not being asked to prove the existence of a derivative value, simply the function value C prime of something um, in between zero and eight. So IVT will help us solve part B. Now, part C, correct units. Whenever they say this in an FRQ, there's probably a point allotted for units. Explain means a complete sentence. Explain the meaning of a definite integral. Here it is. And again, in context, talk about your expression, your value in context of the pizza chain and the number of phone calls. Now, what kind of approximation do we want to use here? It says a right Riemann sum. A right Riemann sum. Simple rectangles, length times width, with four sub intervals. So I'll use four calculations, four rectangles, as indicated by the table. So let's go back here and take a look at the table from 0 to 8. And if I just sketch in rectangles here, there's the first, second, third, and fourth. So what I'm going to write down is, again, my approximation, the integral from 0 to 8 of C prime. 
is the number of calls, and that'll be in hundreds, the pizza chain, here's my context again, receives from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. That's time zero to time eight. We have to make sure we always interpret the bounds when we write a sentence about a definite integral. So there's my explanation. It's just to actually use that right Riemann sum to find an approximation for the value. So let's do that next. This will be approximately, approximately equal to the sum of the areas of four rectangles. Let's find the first width of the first rectangle. The width is delta t. Here it's 1. And because I want to write Riemann sum, I'm going to use the right corner of that function height, which is going to be 4.5. So my width of 1 and the height of 4.5, that would comprise the area of rectangle number 1. The next delta t for rectangle 2 has a width of 3 and a function height of 2.5. Again, if I use the right corner, the right-hand corner. So width times the height of 2.5. And the next one is going to be a 2 times 1. You can check that in the table, followed by a 2 times 0.2 for a final answer of 14.4 or uh, 1,440 calls. There's the units. And I explained the meaning. I wrote a sentence. I used a right Riemann sum. There's no one half anywhere in the formula. I'm not doing anything with trapezoids or trap rules. So it's a simple, again, a base times height, length times width, rectangle calculation. I have four rectangles. And I'll color code them for you once again so you can see them. So here's the first rectangle. First second, third, and fourth. Add them together to create your right Riemann sum approximation, which leads us to the final part of this pizza problem. And now we introduce, it looks like, a new function, capital F. And it says here, this is the number of calls that the pizza chain receives in terms of x, where x is the number of delivery drivers when there are 60 drivers, the number of drivers is decreasing at a rate of 7 24th drivers per hour. So we're actually dealing with rates in terms of time right now. And then the question says, what is the rate of change of delivery calls with respect to time? So I need some kind of DT in here when we have 60 drivers delivering pizzas. This is what's known as a related rates problem. And with every related rates problem in calculus, we have some kind of known rate, and we have some kind of unknown rate that the question is asking us to solve for. Uh, the question says, what is the rate of change in delivery calls with respect to time? Okay, so that would be essentially, um, if function f here is the number of delivery calls, and that would be df dt. So df dt, that's my unknown rate. The known rate is the number of drivers is decreasing at 7 24th drivers per hour. And it says x is the number of delivery drivers. So dx dt is known to be negative 7 over 24. Negative because the number is decreasing. So here's the known rate. Here's what we're searching for, df dt. And the function they give us here is this capital F, um, x squared over 200 minus 2x. Now, what I would like to propose to you is this. Is there, if I find the derivative of capital F 
then what essentially I found is df df dx, the derivative of f with respect to x. But take a look at this, take a look at these other rates for just a moment. Look at the units and the variables here. Let's write an equation that kind of connects these derivative statements together. So df dx is actually going to be equal to or rather, let's do this, since we're solving for df dt. df dt can be found by taking df dx and multiplying it by dx dt. So just kind of look at what we have here. F, capital F prime is df dt, sorry, df dx. dx dt is, is given here, and then df dt is unknown. Notice here that these dx's will cancel, and there's why I can make that statement. df dt on the left, and then df dt on the right. So because I'm searching for this right here, the way I go about finding it is by finding df dx and multiplying it by dx dt. dx dt is given, that's nice, but df dx is not. That's going to be back here, where I have to find f prime. So let's do that using the quotient rule. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which would be uh, negative 2, all divided by the bottom squared. So there's my expression for df dx. If we just take that and substitute it right in there. And we multiply it by the negative 7 over 24 for dx dt. Right there, we'll have our solution. And again, it's when there are exactly 60 drivers delivering pizzas. So what I really want to do is figure out what this expression is when x equals 60 drivers. So compute that by plugging in um, 64x. So df dx when x equals 60 will essentially go in there, and that will then go there, and it will then be multiplied by that negative 7 over 24. All right, so how does that all look when it all shakes down at the end here? So we'll have a 2 times 60 times a 200 minus 2 times 60 plus 2 times 60 squared all over 200 minus 2 times 60 squared. Multiply that by dx dt, which is negative 7 over 24. And we'll have negative 49 all over 64 when we're finished. What are the units on that? Well, it's df dt. I can go back here to the problem. Find the rate of change of delivery calls with respect to time. Calls per hour. So there's a walkthrough of that second part of Brian Passwater's really nice mock exam. Um, a great collection of problems. And I hope that was uh, useful to you. And I hope you were able to gain some insight, maybe refine and reinforce some ideas. So uh, thank you for watching. And I hope that you continue to have success in your studies and preparations for this year's AP exam.